Greetings, my name is Peter Alexander. In this video I'm going to show you some of my process for creating stylized and exaggerated characters using Character Creator and Blender. First I'm going to load the CC3 Plus base. Character Creator starts with a female figure when you load it, but the base is actually gender neutral. Next I'm going to export an OBJ file using the new Character in Bind Pose option. In Blender, I'm going to go to the CC3 tab, which comes with the Blender Auto Setup add-on, and select the Import for Morph option. This will import the OBJ as one mesh with the appropriate groups and setup to import back into Character Creator. In my experience, you don't want to alter the vertex groups. Regarding shape keys, there's something important I should mention. If you plan to use the multi-resolution modifier, do not add shape keys, you'll end up creating a situation for yourself because these functions are not really compatible to the best of my knowledge. The reason I use it here is because I want the option of cancelling out some of the distortions I'll be creating in the mesh. Typically I exaggerate the character a bit in Character Creator before importing it into Blender. So I was struggling a bit to move the mesh around without mangling it to fit the right proportions. Eventually I decided to simply grab the vertices directly in edit mode and move the limbs to approximately where I want them. It's an ugly way to do it, but it'll eventually come together as I continue with the process. I use the smooth brush to relax the vertex positions that I stretched out, and then mostly use the grab brush to push and pull everything to where I need it to be. Since Character Creator provides the normal maps I'll be using, I won't need to bake any high resolution maps. This is just about getting the form that I want. As you can see, there's no magic or even skill involved here. In fact, you can do most of this with a mouse rather than a drawing tablet. The things you really have to worry about during this process are deforming the hands, the feet, and keeping approximately the, the same pose at the end of the process. For example, if you export with a, an A pose, you want to import with an A pose. I overlaid a wireframe onto the, the mesh so that I can better see the distortions as I'm sculpting.
One of the things I really like about this process is that when you import back into Character Creator, you can reduce the exaggeration, add to the exaggeration, or mix it with your other library of character morphs. It doesn't have to export as a perfect character. I'm just about done with this part of the process. I know that I'll be adjusting it a bit more within Character Creator. When you're ready, make sure you're in object mode, select the mesh, then export using the export character morph option. Back in character creator, import the file you just saved using the morph slide editor. I can see that I have a bit of an issue. The eyes didn't follow the mesh when I imported back into Character Creator. This could be a small bug or it could be an issue with the shape keys I had set up. Regardless, it's an easy fix. I just go into wireframe mode and see where the eyes are. Then I grab them in edit mesh mode and place them where they need to be. I'm also going to adjust the teeth. I also noticed that the lip needs some uh, significant work along with the tongue there. Now I'm going to add some visual details using Skin Gen. I'll be applying a, a skin base that I created for another project. Then I'll be adding some details using the Skin Gen normal maps.
I had some clothing and props from, from another version of this character, so I just added them to this character. And this is just me having a bit of fun with the character design. The most powerful feature of this Blender add-on is the ability to import characters from Character Creator with all of the details and shaders set up for optimal display. It's really nice. Just to export as an FBX and then import into Blender using the Character Import option and the add-on does the rest. You can turn off some of the visual options in Blender so that only your character is visible. Blender will take a moment to process the textures and materials when you switch to the material or render preview mode. This looks fine, but there are scene tools with this add-on that will generate lights for you and give it a much more vibrant appearance. This can be combined with other Blender add-ons such as the EV production suite on Blender Market for more lighting options. And on that note, I'm going to conclude this video. My name is Peter Alexander. I hope I have been helpful in some way. Happy creating!